this is the noise you can hear it's a Chinese warm air heater uses diesel or kerosene to heat air up just something to try and get a little bit of temperature up into the shop um, I've had this delivered from Bangkok I'm going to do a review on it uh, at the minute I'm quite pleased it's quite happy going away there it's got the, the garage much warmer it's obviously not going to stay in this position it's going to be moved I've got a little house made for it which will take some of the noise away anyway that's the that's the background noise again here this is part of the governor unit of a diesel pump of another tractor uh, the lads have a good getting the, these screws out of the end he's got one loosened off that one refuses to move he's had a real good go at it um, I'll weld it I'll build it up a weld I'll weld a nut on there once I get the screw out I've got a lot of play on this cross shaft here see the play on the bushes there in fact there's no bushes in there it's straight in aluminium so I'm going to drill and ream that out make two bushes and press them in the first thing is to try and get that screw out of there what I'll probably do is put a nut on a 13mm nut and weld through the nut and get, try and get a good hold of it um, at least I can get a, a decent grip on it also the heat going through there should help to release the threads first go to method for removing studs and bolts that are seized in, especially in a workshop like this. And so you can see what I've done there. And even that screw is still salvageable. See the corrosion on the threads there. Heat's always the best method for removing sea studs. Always has been, always will be. Any penetrating around the world is not going to get down past that. Right, I'm quite sure what happens now. Definitely something happening. Inside of there. That shite, that. Dear me. Ah, 
that is absolutely Clean up. Let's see what happens. It's spring loaded. Plunger there. I'm not sure if that's meant to move. It probably is. That steel and aluminium that's meant to move, I would think. Okay, that is supposed to move again to this bastard. I move for a long time now. The little rag on the end of there that's stopped me coming out. I get that rag out. Rag out! I take that rag off and look it'll come apart. So that comes out of there, and there's a spring in there. This is absolutely filthy. This gun is up years and years of shite. I would imagine that pin will go down that way. So that's the pin and the spring out of it. It's actually wasted away there with the corrosion. Incredible lad. I'll try and get this piece of part so I can repair those, push those things and then I think that's about as far as I'm going to go with it. Right, I've managed to get the cross shaft out. And you can see how much wear there's on there. The shaft's actually worn as well but it, I think you can get a new one of these shafts, so I'll carry on, I'll drill that out and bush it and ream it to that size there. I have to set this up so we can Drill that, keep it nice and straight. I've got an idea how I'm going to do it. Um, that's the next job to deal with that. I've got a nice little cool made angle plate, my friend Bob gave us. I've checked in, it is actually spot on 90 degrees. I'm going to use that to mount, the, to mount this on. I just mounted with two bolts through there, line that up so it's square and then drill it. And just square it onto the, the bed of the machine. It doesn't need to be 100% square for what I'm doing. If it did, you'd use a, a DTI run a clock along there. Right. Some suitable bolts in there now, and I'll find a pin that's a reasonable fit in there and use that to line it up so it's straight up and down towards the quill. Right, I've got an 8mm transfer punch running through the bastard. 8mm transfer punch running through there, and it's 
sort of a wobbly fit because it, it's a decent fit in the oval holes. So basically I'm going to go with that, tighten it up at that, lock the table off at that and I'll be able to drill it out and make some bushes and ream it. So that's dip into there quite nicely. And that's sort of as, as good as I can get. Okay, I'm gonna go through with a 12 mil drill and that'll give us a bush, uh, two mil side thickness. I've actually lined it up so the drill will go into that T-slot, but what I'm gonna do, put a bit of metal in there, and it means if you go through and it bites and pulls in, it won't mark the table. Some people call them witness marks. I just think it's where some clumsy bastard hasn't been careful what they're doing. Right, I'm going to slowly feed this drill through. I'm going to feed it through using the table because it'll definitely snatch and grab if I try and use the quill. It's a nice sharp carbide drill. Go about there so it could go up. It is going through nice and straight. You could use a milling cutter to do this. If that was made of steel or aluminium, you would use a milling cutter. But this is drilling the hole nice and through and straight and parallel. Right, so that's it all the way through, like I say, it will hit that plate without causing any damage to your machine. So basically now we need to make some bushes for it. I've got a piece of brass bar here, I'll be able to get the two bushes out of. Down on the shaft at 5 sixteenths. I haven't got a 5 sixteenths ream on it, I've got an 8 mil ream on 8 mil is just under 5 sixteenths, so I'll probably give that one a try first. See, the shaft is worn, but new shafts are available. The housings are gone here. So I've got the 8mm reamer with a 7.9mm drill in the same, the same box. Slow things down. Through. 
and that's going to be it's a little bit tight actually it's a pity I haven't got a 516 streamer it's only a few thou on that size but it is on that size I'll put it through again oh you bastard <coughs> Yeah, we'll drill this time. That may just take enough out of it. Not quite. I found a little boring bar. A little high speed boring bar. Don't we'll see what happens. It is cutting, not much, but it is taking the chill out of it. Oh, that's that's good, excellent. That'll do. Right, just the outside to turn down now. Okay, so that's going to be a nice fit in there. I'll just part the length off, length off, and then I'll probably put in a lock tape just to make sure. I'm going to put a little touch of lock tape on there just to make sure that that bush won't move. Take much, this is bearing great Loctite, so it's ideal for the job. That's going to be quite a tight fit in there. Right, that's certainly going nowhere. Just putting the bushes in there, even with the worn shaft, is significant to reduce the amount of play that's in there. That will that will work perfectly all right. And the new shaft will make it absolutely mint. This one's cleaning up now and putting back together, but that's that's not major than I'll be going to do all that myself. I mentioned last week on the content box on the start of the video. There's a link that takes it to a page where you can buy a, a double boost hat or a double boost. That's a hat, John. A double boost hat or a double boost coat or even a double boost polo shirt. Any money raised on that goes back into my shop to make better videos. Anyway, have a look. You know, I know it might make a nice Christmas present for somebody. Anyway, once again, it's just time to see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in. Anyway. Thanks very much.